Hello, I'm Mike Russell from MusicRadioCreative.com. In this mini-series covering the preferences menu of Adobe Audition, we're going to be looking at multi-track today. Let's hop in, but before we do, remember to like this video, also go ahead and subscribe and ding the bell on my channel so you never miss another audio production tutorial. Now, here we are in the multi-track, and we're gonna be working a lot with this uh, during this particular session. If I hit Control comma or Command comma on a Mac, I get my preferences menu, I can go to multi-track, and you've got the default panning mode as the top option. Uh, best just to leave this as minus three dB center, unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, it's, it's all to do with pan law, and and there's a lot of complicated stuff and theory behind this. And I'm just going to say that by leaving it on minus 3 dB center, what it will do is reduce your audio by minus 3 dB. So you can see this test here. I've got a tone that is at minus 3 dB right now. It's a monotone. When I bring it into a stereo multi-track and then go ahead and mix that down with the default setting, now you'll see only one channel is coming out, the left channel, and that's at minus 3 dB, just as you'd expect. That's because I've got this first track panned all the way over to the left. If I now put it in the center so that I'm going to get the tone printed on both tracks, left and right. Let's mix down and look what happens. And you'll see both left and right channels are now reduced by 3 dB to minus 6 dB. And this is to use pan law to balance things out. Uh, definitely type pan law into your favorite search engine if you want to know more. I think it goes beyond the theory of this video, but just suffice to say multi-track, leave it as minus 3 dB center for the default panning mode. On to track solo, and you've got exclusive or non-exclusive. Now, non-exclusive, the default, means that I can solo many different tracks here if I want. So this tone track, another track maybe with some sound effects on, a track with a voiceover. Uh, it doesn't have to be just one track soloed at the same time. However, if I go to here and say exclusive, I'm only allowed to solo one track at a time. See, it then switches over. I can overwrite this by holding down the control or command key. See, so it is possible to override, but it just changes the behavior there uh, by being exclusive instead of non-exclusive. Okay, click OK. And you see, I've got a couple of multi-track mixdowns that are not involved in this multi-track session. And my next option is to reference all open audio and video files when saving sessions. Now, I would advise not ticking this, but if you do tick this, it means when I save this multi-track session, it's also going to reference these files, meaning if I then go ahead and open this multi-track session in the future, it's going to be looking for these files, even though, unless I drag them over, they're not inside my multi-track session. So in my opinion, best to leave this off unless you want to retain every single file you've got open in Adobe Audition. Back here, and we've got adjust track keyframes when performing ripple edits. Now, believe it or not, this can actually be really handy, and I will show you how. Uh, let me record a little bit into the multi-track. We're going to look at recording in the multi-track a little bit later. Hello, this is Mike. Nice to be here. Okay, and we're going to do a very simple multi-track automation on this. Let's switch off recording for a second, zoom right in. There's my recording. I can pop down this little triangle here to get the automation menu up. And I might say that I actually want to turn the volume down when I say nice to be here. And I've turned it down by about minus 7 dB. Okay, so I've got, hello, this is Mike. Nice to be here. You can hear the volume has gone down. Now, if I do a ripple edit, uh, which is obviously in the ripple edit menu, ripple delete, and I delete the time selection in all tracks, watch what happens to my automation here. So control or command shift and delete. And look, the automation actually budges up. Whereas if I do it manually, delete, you see it doesn't budge up. So ripple delete is handy on many levels. If I went into the multi-track menu and I didn't adjust the track keyframes with a ripple delete, look what happens. It ripple deletes, but that automation does not move. So again, in my opinion, best to leave that one ticked, if you ask me. During loop playback, loop at the end of the last clip. Okay, this should be pretty self-explanatory. With that ticked, if I were to switch on loop mode and start playing back. Hello, this is Mike. Nice to be here. Hello, this is Mike. It just keeps looping around at the end of the last clip in your multi-track. In this case, there's only one clip, so it does at the end of this one clip. Now, if I go back into multi-track and I switch this off, watch what happens. Loop mode still on. Play. Hello, this is Mike. Nice to be here. On and on and on. So it doesn't loop. So really, again, this is something I'd advise keeping ticked. Okay, on to when arming tracks for record, enable input metering and enable smart monitoring. So enable input metering is the default. And as you'll see, when I arm this track to record, hello, hello, 
That is input metering, the level meters moving around. Now, if I were to go into multi-track and disable that when I arm a track to record, hello, 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 ah, I'm not getting any level. So I like to have that on to see that things are ready for recording. And smart monitoring, if I enable that, that's going to also enable me to hear back in real time what's happening in this track. Hello, hello, a bit of an echo, a bit of latency there from my audio interface. And if I go so far as to add an effect, uh, let's add a pitch shift, pitch shifter, pitch shifter, and go down, and go down, and go down, and go down, and go down. And go down. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of latency. A lot of latency. A lot of latency. And a lot of echo and feedback. So that's smart monitoring. Generally, you don't really need that to be on. So I leave that off. But the input metering is definitely handy to see you've got levels there to record with. Randomize track color. Oh, this is a good one. Whenever I add a track to the multi track by hitting Alt A, it'll give me a track of a random color. Let's see. Alt or Option, of course, on a Mac. Look at all those lovely, random, beautiful colors. Now, if I were to disable this feature in the multi-track settings, let's click it off. Alt-A, just the default Adobe Audition green there. <laughs> Nothing very special. So it just depends if you want to be default or if you want some color in your life. I do, so I'm going to leave that on. Avoid overlapping clips when inserting or pasting new clips. This can be quite handy. Uh, for instance, if I copy and paste this audio, so Control-Command-C and then paste... Paste, see it's pasting all over the clips. Whereas if I go in and tick that, it will make sure clips do not overlap when I paste them in. Look, see, pops them onto different tracks. Very, very handy to make sure nothing ever overlaps. That might be a good thing to have on depending on the kind of editing you're doing. Default start time, obviously zero. I mean, if you want, you can start a multi-track session from 30 seconds in, click OK, and then you'll see when you create a brand new multi-track session uh, that it actually starts from the 30-second mark there, which is quite bizarre, but maybe you need it for some use, so bear that in mind. But for me, I'm going to pop that back to zero. And then we've got keyframe automation, auto match optimizations. So this is when you're recording, and uh, let me just give you an example of how these all work uh, by going ahead and showing you. So first of all, if I hit record and then I switch on touch here, it means I can write in automations like volume changes, pans. I'll also open up, let's, let's zoom right in on track one and open up the automations for volume and I'll change the volume as I'm recording. Hello, this is Mike and I'm just changing the volume and then the volume's going back up like that and I'm changing the volume again and it's going back up. Okay, cool. And as you can see there, it's done some nice changes. Now, as you'll see here, it is doing those changes very, very quickly. In fact, if I zoom right in here and get the amount of time between one, you'll see it's about a duration of about 30 milliseconds. And now if we go back into multi-track and look here, minimum time interval thinning is 30 milliseconds. So we want that to be 30 milliseconds. If we make that 500 milliseconds, it's going to make our automations a lot rougher. Let me show you by recording a bit more. Hello, 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 and I'm going to change this volume level and bring it back up, stop, and you see, yeah, much rougher, a 500 millisecond delay between each keyframe there. So we ideally wanted to be a bit smoother. I'm going to put that back to 30 seconds. Okay, next I'll go to multi-track and I will enable linear edit point thinning, and let's record again. Hello, 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 this is me, recording here with a bit of audio as well bringing this down, letting it go back up, and stopping. Okay, now linear point editing is actually really interesting. It removes any keyframes that r just represent static, essentially static stuff that's going on. Uh, so any silences or no changes in your volume levels. So this can actually be quite good to leave unticked in general. And that's what I definitely recommend doing. So leave that unticked. And the auto match time is how quickly when you move something like the volume down or the pan across uh, for it to return back to normal. So at the moment it's one second, but if I make it five seconds and then try and do a quick uh, volume change, you'll see it takes five seconds to return back. Hello, this is me and I'm turning the volume down now and it's taking five, four, three, two, one, about five seconds to return back to normal, whereas before it was just one second. That's one second there. And this is a five second return to normal. Again, in general with this, if you don't need it for a specific purpose, leave these all on default. And that is your guide to the multi-track section 
of the preferences menu in Adobe Audition. If you want to know even more about Adobe Audition, highly recommend you enroll in one of my courses. They're available at mrc.fm forward slash learn. That is mrc.fm forward slash learn. And any questions about the multitrack, including pan law, post them down below.